Hi there, in this video we're going to look at Fast API and how to integrate that with templates and with HTMX. We're going to look at the click to load pattern and we're going to see how to set up Jinja 2 templates using Fast API. Now Fast API is a high performance web framework for building APIs in Python, but it can also support traditional template based web development. And in this video, we're going to look at how to set that up. So let's dive into the code. I've got VS Code open here, and we have a requirements.txt file. Now, what you want to do is install these three requirements pip install r and then requirements.txt. And ideally, you'll do that in a virtual environment. And that'll install these three packages here. Now, obviously, we're going to use Fast API, but we're also going to use Jinja2 for our templates and also Uvicon, which is a very fast asynchronous server. So, what we're going to do here is because we're going to use templates with Fast API, we're going to create a templates directory within this project. Now, this is just a folder that has a main.py and a requirements.txt file. We'll create a templates directory, and within that, we can create and index.html and to this template we can add some boilerplate html5 code this is an emmet abbreviation and it's available in vs code once you've done that we can change this title to anything we want for example fast api demo and finally to the body we're going to add hello world for now and we'll change this later when we're wiring up htmx next i'd like to go to a page on fast api's documentation this is the page for templates and you can find it under the advanced user guide it's down here it's called templates and this will tell you how to set up jinja 2 with fast api and Fast API actually supports any template engine that you want to use. Now, arguably, Jinja 2 is the most common. You'll see that frequently used with Flask, which is another very good web framework in Python. So we're going to go with Jinja 2 in this video, and we've already installed it, so we don't need to run this command. So let's copy the imports into our main.py file that we've defined, and that'll go at the top, and we can remove the static files line. We don't need that. Now we've imported this fast API object. That's the central object in this library. So we can instantiate an app object using the fast API object there. And that will create the app object from which we can create roots in our application. Going back to the documentation, after the app has been created, we can set this templates variable up. And this points to a Jinja2 templates instance, which we've imported from the fastapi.templating module. So let's copy this here and we'll paste that below the app that we've got there. And the directory that we're setting up here is passed as an argument and it matches the templates directory that we've got in our directory here. So let's now set up a fastapi root and it's going to be an app.get request. And then the first argument to that is the path, which we will say is just index. And the app.get decorator takes a second argument for the response class, which we're going to set equal to the HTML response. And that was imported here from fastapi.responses. And the HTML response is how you specify that you're returning an HTML template. As said before, FastAPI is often returning JSON data. In this case, we specify that the response class is an HTML response. So that's all we need for the decorator. Now we can set up the function, which we'll call index, and we'll pass the request into this function, which is going to be an instance of the request that we've imported from FastAPI. And you should note in the documentation that you have to pass the request as part of the key value pairs when you do the template response. Therefore, you also have to have it in the path. That's why we have it here as an argument to this function. So we have that and then what we can do is we can copy this here and we're going to return a template response. So that's the function there and it's going to return a templates.template response. The first argument to that is going to be the name of the template, which is index.html. We created that here. And the second argument is going to be a context, which we're going to set up now. So above that, let's set up a context dictionary here and I'm going to pass the request in here and that's going to be an instance of this request that we get as an argument. And that should be all we need for this function. So let's now see how to run the server and see this template in action. Now we saw in the requirements file that we have Uvicorn installed as a dependency and we're going to use that to start a server here. So the command is Uvicorn and we specify the name of the file which is main and then the name of the app object which in this case it's called app so main app and then we'll also say reload which will allow us to reload 
when there's any changes to the application. So once that's done, we can then go to localhost 8000 and you can see we get a detail not found here. And that's because we haven't got the right root here. We need to go to the index root. So let's copy that and we'll say slash index. And we're still getting that this is not found. So let's go back to our root here. I think we need a slash at the start of this root. So it's gonna be slash index. And if we refresh now, we get hello world, which is what we have in a paragraph tag within our index.html file. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add HTMX and Tailwind CSS to this project. And we're gonna do that within the head tag of our template. Below the title, we can paste these two lines and I'll link to the CDNs in the description of this video. The first one is HTMX and the second one is Tailwind CSS. And we're gonna use Tailwind to apply some basic styles to a table that we're gonna create in a second. So let's firstly test that Tailwind is actually working by adding some Tailwind classes to this paragraph tag. Let's give it some padding, we'll give it padding of six, and we can also give it a background color of red, and that is followed by a number, in this case we'll use 500 here, and that'll give us a particular shade of red. And if we save that and refresh the page, we should now see that we have Hello World and there's a lot more padding applied to this as well as that red background that you can see. So this is all working, Tailwind is working and we've also loaded HTMX. So what we're now going to do is create a table and display some data in that table. So I'm going to remove the paragraph tag and I'm going to paste some code here and we'll go through this code very quickly. Within the body we set up a div with some margin on the x-axis and then we have the paragraph tag that has some text saying movie list within it and this has some additional tailwind classes. We're making this text very large, it's two times extra large here. We're also making the font bold and we're giving it some margin bottom. Below that we create a table and we apply this particular Tailwind class to say that the table has to be at least half the size of the page. And then we also apply some margin bottom to that. Now this table has two columns, one for the film's name, and we're gonna work with movies here, and another column for the director. And we've hard coded a table row here, a single table row with a single film. Now soon we're gonna replace this with some data from the server, but we'll leave it here for now. And below the table, we have a button and that will allow us to load more. And this is the click to load pattern and it's gonna allow us to load more data into this table whenever we click the button. So let's see how this looks on the front end. If we refresh this page, we now have this very basic table. Again, the styles are minimal. We aren't focusing too much on the styling. We're just looking at the table here. And when we click this button, we want to load more data into the table. So the next step is to return some data to this page from our fast API function. So let's go back to the main.py file. And within the index function here, we're now going to create some hard coded data. And I'm gonna paste that in here and it's gonna be called films and it's gonna have three movies within that list. And then we can add that to the context here with a key of films and that should then be available to us in our template. So let's go back to the index.html and we can replace this table row with a Jinja2 for loop. And it's very similar to how it's done in Django. We're gonna say for film in films and then we close the for loop here with end for. And what we had before were these two table data elements. So I'm gonna bring them back and we can replace the hard coded names with the referencing the actual film itself. So film.name and then below that we can copy this and we can then replace Ridley Scott with the film's director. Now these are keys that are available in the data. You can see that here there's a name key and a director key. So we can reference these within this variable here and it should hopefully display on the page. So if we refresh this page we now get this very ugly looking table. Something's gone wrong here. So let's go back to the template. And we're not creating a table row for each film. So let's do that now. Every film should be enclosed by a table row. Close that TR tag and we should now be able to see this in proper rows. And we get that now. So we have data that's coming from our fast API function. We're now gonna set up HTMX to dynamically load more data into this table. And to do that, we need to add HTMX attributes to this button. So let's go back to the template here and down to the button. And we're gonna create an HX get attribute. And we're gonna point that at our index endpoint that we created in the main.py file. So every time HTMX sends the get request, it's gonna hit this function here. 
and it's going to generate these films and return this particular HTML template. Now this isn't going to work perfectly, we're going to change things a little bit soon. But for now, let's see what happens. So make sure we've saved the index.html and we can refresh the page and when we hit load more, we get this effect here. It's loading another table within the button. Now we don't want a table embedded in a button that's arguably not the best user experience. So let's change that up by telling HTMX where to swap the content and using the HX target and the HX swap attributes. So back to the button, we're going to add a target here. It's going to be HX target equal to the table body. So I'm going to set an ID of table body here. And to the table body, we're going to give that the same ID here. So table body. So now when we get the HTML back from the server for the index.html page, it's going to swap the content into the table body. So let's see what happens now. If we refresh the page and load more, we now get this weird effect. Instead, we need to set the HX swap attribute. And the reason for this is because the HTML is being swapped into the body of this table. But remember, we're returning this whole page here at the moment. So that's all being swapped into the table body. So what we're going to do to address this is create a partial template here and we're going to extract this for loop into the partial. So let's call this table.html, table.html and we can paste the for loop in here. So when HTMX sends a request to get more data, we want to return this template rather than the entire index.html. So if we save this, what we can now do is use the include statement here. So similar to Django, we include the table.html here. Let's see how it looks at the beginning here. Does it load properly? It does, so that's all working fine. We want to make sure that that returns the table.html if it's an HTMX request that we're dealing with. So how do we detect if it's an HTMX request? To find that out, we can go to HTMX's documentation. And in the requests and responses section, you can see that there is a header that's included in the requests that HTMX sends. It's the HX request header, and that will always be set to true when HTMX is performing a request. So we can look for that header, and if it exists, we know it's an HTMX request. Now, to get the header in FastAPI, we can go to their documentation, and what you can do is you can import the header object from FastAPI. So let's do that just now. At the top, we'll add that to our imports. And after that, we can accept any headers as arguments here and we give it the name that we need. In this case, we've got user agent and that's an optional string that is set to this header object. So let's paste in ours here. We're going to add it to the index as an argument and we'll change user agent to HX request in this case and we need to import the optional construct from typing. So from typing, import optional. So now that we've got that, let's quickly explain why that works. If we look at the FastAPI documentation, on the headers page, there's a section for automatic conversion. You can see that FastAPI does some automatic conversion of headers for you. So for example, it will convert the underscores in your parameter to hyphens. So in our case, what that will do is it will take hx underscore request and it will change that to hx dash request. And that's what HTMX's documentation has here. It's hx dash request. And FastAPI will also make sure that the case doesn't matter. So for example, we've got all lowercase here. This is the typical way to declare a Python variable or an argument. But this will successfully pick up the hx dash request parameter here. And that's because FastAPI handles this for us and you can read about that here. HTTP headers are case insensitive, um, so you can use these lowercase versions even if the actual header has some uppercase characters. So now that we've done that, let's go back to the code and we can check whether this HX request is none. Remember it's optional, so it could be none. And if it is none, we know it's not an HTMX request. However, if it's defined, then we know it is an HTMX request. So we can use an if statement here, if HX request. And if it is an HTMX request, we'll return a different template. So we'll use the template response class and we'll specify table.html with our context. So if we save that and go back to our front end, we should now see that nothing actually happens at all when we click this button. Now there's one final change we need to make in this tutorial. We need to change the way that the content is being swapped into the table body. So if we go back to index.html here, currently our target is the entire body of this table here. So when we get a response with our films, 
this particular partial template is loaded with all of the films and then that's swapped into the table body but that replaces what's already in the body. What we want to do is append to the end of the table with new rows for the new data. So there is an HX swap attribute in HTMX that we can use for this. So HX swap and the particular method is before end. We want to, before the end of the table body, we want to swap in these new rows of data. So with that one change, we should be able to refresh the page. And when we hit the load more button, we get another three movies coming up here and it will keep adding these new rows to the table. Now obviously this isn't particularly smart. We have in our main.py a hard-coded list of films. In real life you would fetch this data typically from a database and it would not just be a hard-coded list. In the next video we'll explore how to set up a database with FastAPI and return that data using SQL Alchemy. But for now this is all working so let's quickly walk through what's going on one more time. We have within our index.html a button here that has some HTMX attributes. When clicked, this button will send a GET request to the index endpoint and it will swap the response into the table body before the end of the table. If we look at HTMX's documentation for before end at the swapping section here, you can see that before end will append the content after the last child in the target. So when we return new rows of data from our partial that is retrieved by HTMX, it's new table rows, that will then be swapped in after the last child of the target. So the target is the table body, the last child will be the last table row within that body, and HTMX will then swap the new data as new rows after that. And the new data is fetched from our fast API function here, with some hard-coded films that we're returning in the context. And we've seen how easy it is to set up templates with FastAPI. We simply instantiate a Jinja2 templates object. We pass the directory that contains our templates, and then we can use the template response in our FastAPI functions to return that HTML response. So that's all for this video. We've explored how to set up templates in HTMX with FastAPI. And we've seen a little bit about Tailwind CSS as well, although we haven't gone into much detail about that. In the next video, we'll look at database integration and setting up SQL Alchemy with our Fast API project. Until then, thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you in the next video.